Meteorologist to meteorologist, what is your uh, feeling on the storm? Yeah, it's it's a little bit uh, uncertain uh, as far as the intensity and also the track. Uh, most likely, uh, probably going to track into northeast Mexico or far south Texas. Uh, but we have a lot of spread in the track models. So, uh, you know, it's something that will hopefully come into better focus over the next day or so. There's also questions about how Jamaica and then the Yucatan Peninsula uh, will affect the intensity of the storm. It should weaken. Uh, so there's a lot of question marks, uh, so we're going to have to keep an eye on it. What would you attribute to the large amount of track spread that we are seeing in the models right now? I mean, typically when you've got a hurricane that's so well sampled by the hurricane hunters, it has such a well-defined core, typically it seems like there's better agreement in the models. That just doesn't feel like the case this time around. No, there's been pretty good steering currents on it uh, up till now. Uh, with the west-northwest track. But after it crosses the Yucatan, the steering currents became, become light, lighter. And in a situation like that, subtle features uh, can cause it to maybe tug north or uh, continue to drift west. So uh, I think it's, it's a matter of uh, the models ha not having a good handle on some of these subtle features, or at least treating them differently. And, uh, you know, with reconnaissance aircraft, the hurricane hunters, uh, perhaps some additional soundings uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday and Saturday, hopefully the models will come into better agreement. Uh, what would you say the two options were for this storm going through the next few days if you, if you just kind of had to lay it out in, in the plainest way for the viewers? You know, I would say uh, a weakening storm and one that tracks a bit further south uh, would be a, a good trend for us uh, with a longer track across the Yucatan. You know, that might favor the more southern solution uh, that then just takes it straight into Mexico. Uh, if we see the storm maintain strength uh, and maybe track even in the near term a little bit further north, um, you know, that could have implications down the road for maybe a further north track even into South Texas. So. Uh, you know, we're just going to have to keep an eye on it. And, uh, you know, I would expect over the next day or so for the models to become more clustered. But for now, uh, we just have to keep monitoring. Uh, so we're coming up to a holiday weekend. A lot of people are looking to unplug, become a little more disconnected. They're probably traveling, so they're not going to be as connected to Houston News. Uh, I guess what would your message be for folks? Uh, when do you think uh, folks at home would be able to kind of hone in on when we have a best, you know, when we're starting to get a better idea on what the storm's gonna end up doing. Yeah, Pat, I would, I would just check in daily. Uh, you know, I think parts of the coast uh, could even have some watches issued as early as uh, Thursday evening, definitely by Friday. And, uh, you know, just keep an eye on the forecast, you know, especially for beachgoers. Uh, even if we don't get a direct track our way, uh, We'll have uh, worsening conditions as far as rip currents, uh, swell, and that's even more so down the coast. You know, a place like South Padre Island uh, is going to be closer to the storm. Uh, so, so uh, bottom line, check in every day. Uh, you know, by about Friday or so, you'll start to see uh, you know more details to the forecast. I would say, uh, but it, it could be it could be changeable really right up to the end. And just based on the current track, uh, when do you think we might start to see some of those first impacts outside of uh, coastal and beach impacts here in Southeast Texas? You know, I think uh, South Texas probably will see some higher winds and, and uh, even some surge uh, as early as Sunday morning. Uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, right now landfall is, is predicted uh, uh, around uh, Monday morning, but you know there's a lot of uh, uncertainty in the speed of the of the uh, system as well. But that just gives you a rough timeline. Now, if Houston were to get impacts, or our coastline, uh, even if it's just from heavy rain, uh, you know we're looking at you know perhaps as early as Sunday night, more likely uh, Monday into Tuesday. Um, I guess one of the final weather questions I would ask you, again, meteorologist to meteorologist, uh, you know, we look at a lot of models. Everyone's familiar with the European model, 
and then with the American GFS model, but we have a lot of these more higher resolution uh, hurricane models. Um, do you have any thoughts, you know, just as a Met, someone that's done this for a long time, uh, ones that you, you know, maybe put a little more stock in, or, or is there, does there seem to be an outlier with this case? Yeah, great question. Uh, you know, what's interesting is the average of the better models tends to outperform any individual model. So what I would do is I would keep an eye on what we call the consensus uh, track, more of the average between the two. Uh, it's been very interesting with this system. The American GFS model has been consistently further, much further north uh, than the so-called European model. Uh, and, and they've both been self-consistent, uh, run-to-run. Uh, so that's a bit unusual to see such a, a divergence. Uh, but, um, you know, there are other models uh, that you'll see on those, uh, those spaghetti charts. Honestly, I would focus mostly on the hurricane center track and, and the cone uh, to give you the best idea of the range of possibilities uh, rather than these individual models. And then look for those consensus, you know, more the average of all of the models tends to perform in the individual model. A uh, final question, again, as we head into a holiday weekend, uh, what preps would you tell people uh, to start doing? Are you doing anything yourself? I mean, I, th I think there's a lot of anxiety kind of starting to build up with this storm. So I think the best message is just, you know, what can people start doing now? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be overly anxious, especially in the Houston area. You know, pretty much all of our model guidance uh, takes the, the center of the storm further south. All that being said, we can still get impacts here in Houston as far as uh, potentially heavy rain if it were to take more of a, a northern track. So um, I don't know that I would take any immediate action right here in the Houston area other than just to stay informed, keep monitoring. Uh, don't be overly concerned. Um, now, if you do have uh, friends, family down uh, South Padre, uh, down in South Texas, a bit closer to the impacts, uh, we should have a weaker version of, of barrel perhaps impacting them. But bottom line is still a lot of uncertainty. Don't be overly concerned, but just stay informed. You know, stay tuned to uh, KHOU, the National Weather Service, or, or your favorite uh, meteorologist, uh, you know, to, to, to stay up to date on this forecast that could be changeable, most likely more of a track in New Mexico that would have minimal impacts, but we can't rule out uh, a closer approach, uh, in which case we would. So more uncertainty than usual with this storm. Um, appreciate that. Is there anything else you want to add that I didn't uh, touch on? I don't think so. Uh, you know, like I say, just stay plugged in uh, to your trusted weather sources and, uh, you know, we'll get through this. That's always such a hard thing to impress upon people when they just want to <laughs> unwind for the holiday. Exactly. The other thing I would caution is there's always going to be information, especially on social media, that may be less reliable. So, you know, that may be meant to to cause anxiety and fear. And, and so, like everything else, you got to... Uh, you know, be a little cautious when, when taking in that information. That's right. Always go to your trusted sources that you've relied on for a long time. Uh, Dan, really, really appreciate your time talking to me about Beryl today, and hopefully this is the last conversation that we have to have about this storm. Sounds good, Pat. Thank you. Have a good one.